Hey, Eli here. Today I want to talk to you about the GFX 100S with the Sigma EF85 1.4 adapted through the Fringer adapter. Uh, pretty rad setup. A little bigger than my 80 mil, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> if I'm pulling this thing out, I don't really care about the size. Uh, lugging it around, it's not a big deal. But yeah, so I think it was amazing. Uh, I took it out to Boise, up into Stanley, Idaho, did a couple portrait sessions, took pictures of my brother. I'm just going to show you a fraction of the images today. Um, but in my experience, just as sharp at 1.8 versus 1.7, you get down to 1.4, it softens up a little bit. But at 100 megapixels, not a big deal at all. I'm not making billboards. None of my clients are probably printing over 30 inches for the most part. Um, and I'm using this for portraits and it gives me more character. Vignetting, basically the same as the 80 mil. You might get a little more at 1.4, but Lightroom corrects it really well. So you get your full frame out of that, you get the full medium format, and then um, sharpness, uh, sharpness is great, um, autofocus. Um, yeah, it's just as good, So uh, or just as inconsistent, because <laughs> uh, this isn't the best focusing camera. It's better than the 50S and 50S2, but it's still not anywhere near, you know, APS-C or, um, you know, full frame. Full frame is probably the winner on autofocus all around. But I used to use it for portraits, and it's fun. I love it, man. It's it's a cool cool setup. So let's jump in here. Uh, just quick thoughts. I'm probably going to get rid of this GF lens and either pick up the Sigma 85.14, or today I have coming in the 85 from Canon, the 1.2. I'm going to take that to a wedding in Yosemite for a friend, as well as the 50 1.2 from Canon. So to see how those hold up, because uh, I prefer to stay within Canon if I can. Um, I also like that... By doing that, I have the Canon adapter for the RF system, so I can go Canon EF to RF. So I, you know, I can use a, 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 a larger range of lenses and camera setups, uh, especially if I have second shooters. I can hand off an 85, an F2, or uh, you know, a native one and an adapted. Cool. Enough rambling. Let's jump in here. This is my brother. Oh. We're gonna go with the 80 mil on the left and the 85 on the right. We're at, at 1.7 on the left and 1.8 on the right. And these images are large, so loading two at a time. It's really pushing my computer. All right, so we've got them loaded and I cannot tell a difference on a 5K monitor. Uh, yeah, his eyelashes and eyes are just tack sharp. Yeah, it can't get any sharper than that. Uh, so, in comparison, I think they are equivalent. Let's look at their vignettes. So this is the 80, 80 mil, the native lens. And then, turning on and off the 1.8 Sigma. Okay, now let's look at the comparison between the 1.4 uh, aperture and the 1.8. And so we're going to look at the vignette first on 1.8, or 1.4. So a lot more vignette on 1.4. You can see the difference here. And then let's pull those off and then compare them. On the left, we have 1.8. On the right, we have 1.4. And we're softening up a little bit on the right. It's still plenty sharp. Like, I don't have any issues with that sharpness at all. And if you want more in focus, you're trying to do commercial work and you want to shoot clothing brands, you can stop this down probably to F4 and just, I imagine, it's going to be extremely sharp. But for character and portraits and having fun, um, yeah. Another thing to note is I don't notice a big difference in focal lengths. So on the right now we have the GF. And on the left we have the 85. And I'm not seeing that we're losing much of this image uh, at a 5 millimeter difference. So... Something to note. All right, next up we have outside. It was really bright, so my brother's squinting. Um, but we have 1.7 GF lens on the left and then the Sigma on the right. Okay. So we can see we are just slightly softer on the right. But again, no issue with that unless we're trying to do commercial work and print billboards. I mean, look at his teeth. You can see, I don't know what's going on right there, but you can see... <laughs> All right. And then I think that on the left, we're getting a little bit more of that green fringing um, that just shows the quality of the Sigma is pretty great. I don't really care about that stuff, but yeah, pretty cool. All right. What's next? All right. Here we have outside again, just a little bit different lighting, a little brighter 
On the left, we're at 1.8 with the Sigma. On the right, we have the GF lens. And just as sharp, in my opinion. Yeah, not seeing a big difference. And then let's look at a comparison at 1.4 on the left and 1.8 on the right, both Sigma. Slightly softer on the left, but again, don't care. It's plenty sharp. You're getting that character, Boca. Look at that. Yeah, that's great. Great separation. And then let's look at the vignettes compared outside. Oh, I guess I just had them off. Okay. So here, 1.8, 1.4. So you're getting more vignette, but still correctable. And it might even be overcorrecting. Like you can see, it's a little too bright on these corners. I'd, I'd probably back it off. All right, here is an image out on the street. One's profile on and off. You can see the vignetting at 1.4. Check out the sharpness. Sharpness is great. A little bit of like softness, but I think it's great. All right, over here I made a panoramic two images just to get the sign into focus or in the frame, and so we can see how sharp this is. Yeah, plenty good. All right, here in Freak Alley, downtown Boise or Boise. Awesome, and see how sharp that is. A little soft, but man, don't matter. Still great. All right, let's jump over into the mountains. And Stanley I ran into some former clients, and we can see how focus, focus, the how sharp this is at 2.0. Little load, cool, plenty sharp. And then made a panoramic. Oops, little panoramic for you there, and you can see how that stitched together. Pretty great. I'm not seeing any weird vignetting lines. And again, in the snow, let's see other vignette. Yeah, it's minimal. And then over here, I did this photo particularly only for vignette. So I did this on all the, the lenses. I wanted to see with blue skies, you really get the most noticeable. And I did have to shoot at 2.0 because it was so bright. And I, you know, capped out my shutter and aperture or and ISO. But the reason I want to check that is because if you make panoramics, a lot of times you'll get these blue, like darker sections where it's stitched. And here I'm not seeing that problem. So I know I can make a panoramic with an 85, which is which is awesome. And here's another one I made with an 85. Um, backlit's not as big of an issue, but front lit with the sun and blue sky is where you'll notice those lines to pop start popping in. Cool, all right, here, check that vignette. Check the sharpness. I notice as we get a little further away, it's maybe less accurate or less sharp. Probably less sharp. And these lenses were beat up. I mean, they were, you know, they've been around. <laughs> so if you bought one that was in really good shape, it might be different. But as we get closer, we do sharpen up. So we can see that it is capable of being sharp. So, and then again, as we back up, slightly softer. 1.4 and maybe just a focus inconsistency as well and very close probably almost minimal minimum focus yeah 12 uh, 1200 ISO and this one's a lot prettier yep on our eyelashes right there super sharp and then my daughter Goofball, 4000 ISO, no problem focusing this in low light. And then my first image I took with it outside. Very sharp, so. Cool, all right. I think it's an amazing option. Um, this GF lens is like around 2000 uh, bucks. If you're buying it used and then I priced out the um, Sigma lens around 900 used, and that's about, I think, what you'll pay. You know, you're probably going to pay like 1000 to 1200 for the Canon used. And uh, with those lenses, you're going to want to look for, you know, something that's in good shape because they've been around a while. And, you know, probably test it out before you shoot it or buy it somewhere where you have a 30-day return policy to make sure, it, you know, it functions properly, is in good shape. Uh, images don't always tell the, the full story. So, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Um, if it is, you know, like it. 
and maybe subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. I've got the 50 next, the 35, and the 24 from Sigma, and I've already done a review of the 105. So have a good day.